Well, come on and praise the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How are y'all doing this evening? All right, intercessors are coming in. Good evening, Minister Leah, Minister Cherie, Lisa, Minister Paulette, Minister Vanessa, Elder Kim. Good evening. That's right. Say good evening to each other. Hello, Hope. Molden. Good evening, Janet. Minister Christo, Reverend Corendis. Welcome. Good evening, Diane. Prophet Latanya. Darshan. Welcome, Nanita. Welcome, Priscilla, Natasha, Carla. Good evening, Melissa. Good evening, Kristen. Prophet Elitza. Good evening, good people. Sunshine Tiffany, good evening. Good evening, Minister Patricia Wilson. Good evening, Mary. Good evening, Karen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. For coming in today. Look like I see anything coming up for YouTube. Let me get YouTube straight as y'all come in. Get your tea, your notebooks, your notepads. Let's get ready. Welcome, Charity. Shamaniac, welcome. Dolores Bob, God bless you. Welcome. Welcome, Israel. Cora, good evening, good welcome. Corita, good evening. Christopher Blake. All right, for some reason I don't see the Facebook, I mean the Periscope and the YouTube app working well tonight. They're two in one, so if one doesn't work, I've got to sign out of both. Welcome Edith, welcome Apostle Diane, Minister Cynthia. Good evening, good people of the Most High. We are at our wrap-up night. Can y'all believe it? We are at our wrap-up night. Did everyone fast today? Let me see the hands of those who fasted today. And if you fasted till 12 or if you fasted till 4, for some reason, 4 p.m. was in my spirit. So I went all the way to actually 5, but my goal was 5, 4 p.m. So tell me who fasted with me today. What intercessors was on board? All right, I see 10 intercessors on Periscope. I'm sorry, Periscope. I don't know what I'm going to do because I may have to sign you guys out because for some reason the YouTube link did not take effect in... Huh. Let me just make sure it's not on the Apostles House page in some kind of fluke. Yeah, Ebony, I don't see Facebook. I mean, um, YouTube, though. Nope, it's not, up. it's not on Apostles' House either. Welcome, Minister Jackie, Minister Kareem, Sandra. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Angela Blake, Carla. Welcome, come on in. Hello, Maria. I see hands saying Maria fasted. 
Ebony Fasted. Real good. Come on, show me some hands. Hmm. All right. Um, Facebook, y'all doing well, as always. So I'm going to need y'all just to stand by with us. Give us a couple minutes. Periscope, I'm going to have to shut y'all down and reboot. So I'm going to need uh, all 11 of you to get back on here. Facebook is almost at the 50, 52 mark where we seem to stand every day. But um, we don't have our YouTube church. So let me shut down Periscope, reboot, and bring YouTube back up with it. So just give me two and two. Y'all got some more time to get your tea and your juice. All right, I think we're going to get up here. Let's see what we can get going here. And try it again. Stay with me. Try it again. Hope we won't have to leave no man behind tonight. Welcome, Pastor Carolyn, Minister Katrina. Someone's looking for clarity. Sandra's looking for clarity about the assignment. Yes, my goal tonight uh, we finished chapter 16 last night. My goal is to finish chapter 17 tonight, which is our final chapter. But I believe after looking at chapter 15 on the watches and walks that I can actually hit that tonight. So I'm going to hit 15 and 17 tonight, which means we only did not get to go through chapter 14. And um, with that, we will make up chap chapter 14 if not this upcoming Monday, the following Monday night, we will make up for it. And I am expecting all homework in um, from one week's time. I'm looking for homework to come in from one week after the broadcast is done. So one week after tonight, I am expecting. All right, looks like they're coming in here, but I still don't see anything on YouTube. So there must be another problem with YouTube. So I'll have to apologize to my YouTube family. For some reason, it looks like something expired again with them. They go through this often. And uh, tonight's not the night we're going to deal with it. However, all of our videos do end up on YouTube. And they remain up there forever and ever. So um, that is something that I'm going to get done. I will upload Facebook's video up onto YouTube so that everyone can have it.
Yeah, I don't see anything happening with YouTube tonight. So we're going to keep going. Hopefully Periscope is going to pop up any minute. Yep, Periscope is coming back up. YouTube is on vacation again. That's what happens when you have to rely on all these different apps. That's why I need y'all to go on and subscribe to YouTube so I can just stream directly to YouTube and not have to use these third-party apps because it used to be simple. We used to be able to, um, to broadcast to Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope all at one time. Then Facebook got funny about it and said they didn't want to be linked in with any of the broadcasts. So we have to have a separate um, streaming, so a separate camera or phone, a separate streaming for Facebook, and use the app to stream to YouTube and Periscope at the same time. But they have all these issues now where they want the 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 lease. The it's a not a, a real lease, but it's a lease in in the cyber world. They want it renewed ever so often, and for some reason, it's like they'll have you renewed every thirty days or something. It's really kind of pathetic for the work we do. But because I'm working alone here, this is the best that I can give you all tonight. However, all of the videos will be up on YouTube. And if you could, if you're going to start a prayer group and you're going to go get a few people to go through the training with you on Periscope, that would be wonderful. And all you have to do is start with video one. I made a playlist. It says Intercessor Training 2020. And all of the training sessions are in there and they're dated day one day two day three day four they're all there so um you can start all over for those that are jumping in for those that are catching up for a lot of y'all that got hit with different things and you haven't been able to uh get your work done you'll still have time now tonight is our final broadcast we're on a little bit late tonight so it's almost 8 30 so we're probably going to stay on to almost 9 30 y'all need to stay with me tonight um so we're going we're gonna to do a full hour tonight, but also um, I'll come back on another Monday and we'll handle chapter 14, which I believe is corporate intercessors, which I think is, you know, that's like second to what you really need because what you really need, you know, that's more for church leaders and all. What you really need is how to start your prayer walk, how to understand prayer watches. Um, I'm praying, earnestly praying that your pastors will let y'all start prayer teams in the church. Um, Dolores, Bob, I hope you're here still. I um, really want to help the Anna women incorporate their prayer group and help you um, get things started so that you can um, set up your team, have your prayer leaders, your prayer captain, and all of those. So um, we got some good stuff that we're working on. And um, the picture actually looks pretty clear tonight. Hmm. This is very interesting, but for some reason, yes, yeah, says YouTube is not on. How's the picture look tonight, guys, on Periscope? Does it look better than it has in the past? And it says it's broadcasting on YouTube. But I don't see it. Okay, guys. I'm going to continue to work that in the background. So let's begin. Let's turn to, in our um, training manual, please. In our training manual, let's go to chapter 15. Let's go to chapter 15. We're going to hit prayer watches and walks. And I think we can still close up with chapter 617 on tonight for our final night. Welcome all. I'm glad you're on with me tonight. I hope your Friday night is blessed. Um, for those who fasted today with me, I had another rough day. <laughs> My husband thinks it's the caffeine. He said, it's the caffeine. Your body is used to that caffeine by 7, 7 in the morning. You're not giving it that caffeine. So that's what's causing you this pain. And I'm like, Man, pain. It was all on the side of my face. Then it like took out my eye and tried my hardest not to have to take any medicine for it or anything. But um, it was really kicking my butt today. 
But I made it through. You know me. I'm a warrior. I'm not going to give in to that stuff. We're going to get through. So chapter 15. Let's turn in our, our, our manual tonight. Chapter 15, if you will. <clears throat> I didn't get a chance to shout out last night. It was my intention. But I'm really concerned with how much I can give us at this amount of time. Um, but I did want to give a shout out um, of, of happy birthday to Associate Pastor Dolores Davis, who has been pastoring and co-laboring alongside with me and many others of the Apostles House for many moons now, 10 or 11 years now. And glory be to God and praise God um, also for Evangelist Gwen. Her birthday was also yesterday, and yet they were on here getting their training. See, that's what we are developing at the Apostles House. We are developing at the Apostles House Generals, where holidays, birthdays, um, what you say? We don't know anything about any of that stuff. We don't know anything about it. We had to rebuke my household. Yep, happy birthday to them. That's right. So, um, looks like we got everything going good. All right, so let's go. Chapter 15. Um, thank you all for fasting with me today. I plan to be on this Monday again. If I'm away, um, I may go for two nights and get a massage and all that stuff. Um, if I'm away, then I'll be on the following Monday. But you'll get a notification on it either way. Please, 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 please make sure your notifications are on on here on Facebook. If you don't know how to do it, email us and one of the coaches will call you back and tell you how to turn on notifications. Um, and also on YouTube. You need YouTube because YouTube is going to have this information forever and ever and ever. And it has every playlist from every year that I've done this. And I've been doing this since 2017. 30 days. Since 2017, this is our fourth season. Isn't God good? Um, let's see, whatever else I want to clear up. My team, I want to thank God for my team and all the work that they've done. They really, truly have been a team. Um, just to feel the difference of what it is to have people working with you. Whew, not looking for anything special in return. Just uh, they, they feel like their iron is getting sharpened and they're blessed by the Lord in doing this as well. And I want to thank God for my team um, that sent y'all out a link. And um, it was all their idea, but, you know, they have to ask permission before they do something like that. And they sent down, um, they sent um, a link asking for I pledge, I think it's called. And they're asking everyone to sow a certain seed. And I want to thank God for all those who um, are, have sown the seed already. Those who are sowing the seed again today. Um, a special lady, I don't know, she probably does not want me to shout her name out, but she sold a seed of $300 today. And I'm just grateful because I believe for, th for this individual, the size of her seed represents the size of the blessing that this has been to her life. So I'm thankful for anything that is upon your heart to give, but I'm thankful for a team that feels, you know, God has called this leader to us and she's expending herself. For these 30 days to give through her commission to whoever will and we think that our leaders should receive something in return and they felt on their own to put up this flyer and to ask permission if they could request a C from those that have been on for 30 days with us so I thank God um, for God touching their heart and telling them that and I appreciate every single amount I would do it for free because this is my passion it's what I love so thanks be to God who has called for all of us to triumph. Amen. I want to get that out the way. And also, I don't know if they put it in there. Um, the t-shirts are being made. So we have to make them according to order. So everyone who sows in that I pledge amount or more will get a t-shirt. If you pledge more, like double the amount, you can request two t-shirts or triple the amount. You can request three t-shirts. Um, I wish I had it on tonight, but I'll probably have it on by Monday for you. And the designer made a nice one. She's working on three different ones, but the one that she's created right now is the throw down one that we throw down in the scripture for throwing down. Remember pulling down, casting out, and throwing down. Very nice, um, very powerful uh, scripture there. 
And let's see. So what you have to do is if you want a t-shirt and you have sowed a seed, you need to send your size in. Say, I sowed the seed. Um, this is my size for the t-shirt. If you're not able to sow the seed and you want to purchase the t-shirt, email that in as well. And the team will make sure that they tell you what the t-shirt cost is from us. We'll lay that cost to you and we can get a t-shirt out to you. The email for all of those things are one email, one place, info at SuzanneMHoward.com. Info at SuzanneMHoward.com. Thank you, Evangelist Douglas. Amen. I'm funny about money, y'all. You know, I was raised under good leadership. The church I came out of, they didn't play the money games. They didn't play the miracle money games. Um, they believe if you sow, you'd reap a harvest. If you tithe, you'll, re you'll, re you'll rebuke, you'll block the devourer. And that's how they raised me. And when we needed things done in the church, they would say the air conditioner is down. We need a budget. And we were we were happy to give because they were in a church that constantly, constantly, constantly came before us asking for money. And because they weren't constantly coming before us asking for money, you know, we were waiting for opportunities to give. Because if you know the principles of giving, you reap what you sow. But also, God gives seed to the sower. So we were waiting, like, come on, there's some things I need to take care of by the end of the year. Give us a reason to sow. So that's the ministry that I've come from underneath. And I kept those values and those morals. And I don't like, you know, making us like we're broke and we need seeds and all that. And we should never feel like I'm supporting or um, feel like um, that I'm, um, I'm giving this seed as a tip. It should always be seen as honor. This is a representation of the honor that I have for you. I had a young man sow today and he sold 150 and he says, my goal one day is to sow $15,000 to you. He said, I'm going to put a couple extra zeros on that one day. And I said, glory to God, just, just if it never happens, which I know it will because I know our God, but hear my heart. If it never happens, the fact that there's people in the world that think like that, that have honor like that. What an amazing position we are in in this world. What an amazing position. I don't believe YouTube is up, but I do believe it's going to show afterwards. I was just checking the link here while I was talking and um, the link says that our subscription ran out or however they, not, they do that. But what they do instead is they record it and when we're done tonight, then they'll go ahead and put it up afterwards. I know it's crazy, but this is what you got to go to in social media when they consider you nothing. That's what they do. You're not a priority. All right. I think I got all of our business out of the way tonight. I thank you. That's right. It is honor and it's not a tip. Yep. It's still down, so it won't be up until after. So stay with us here. Periscope is up if you like that better. All right. Let's go. Chapter 15, prayer watches, prayer watches. Isaiah 21 and 11 says, watchmen, what of the night? A number of prayer watches, intense, concentrated prayer for a specific time or purpose. What is a prayer watch? It is intense, concentrated prayer for a specified time or purpose. A prayer watch may take a variety of lengths and forms. Some churches have prayer lock-ins in which a group stays in the church in prayer all night long. In other churches, people come on a 24-hour rotational basis. The value of corporate intercession in prayer watches is that God is able to use all different gift mixes and heart cries to express the needs of his heart. It is always interesting to me to listen to people pray in a prayer watch. They pray from their own personal interests and callings. I have a friend who is greatly involved in government. She always sees a need in terms of raising up good governmental leaders and prays towards that end. Pastors pray from the focus of the ongoing life of the church. Pastors pray from the focus of the ongoing life of the church. Evangelists pray with an eye for the lost. Corporate intercession offers a fulfillment of the mandate in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, to pray without ceasing. No one person can pray 24 hours a day, but a team can. Imagine the power and authority of a team of intercessors praying as the Lord prompts them around the clock. 
What a powerful prayer of agreement of unceasing intercession. In a moment, I'm going to give you some practical, practical aspects of setting up a prayer watch. Prayer watches are a vital way to seize God's will is done on the earth as it is in heaven. Prayer watches are a vital way to see God's will done on earth as it is in heaven. The devil uses the cover of the night to do his worst deeds. I created the night and called it good, and I want my night back, says the Lord. After a word about time segments and team members, I would like to outline some practical aspects, practical, of setting up a 24-hour prayer watch in your ministry or church. Three hours seems to be the best. Three hours seems to be the best. Three hours is even biblical. It's a biblical motto. As the Jewish people prayed every three hours at 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. They prayed at 9 a.m., noon, and 3 p.m. The watches went every three hours. They taught that Abraham instituted the first watch, Isaac the second watch, and Jacob the last. The ninth hour, which is 3 p.m., was the time when Christ died on the cross and the veil of the temple was torn from the top to the bottom according to Matthew 27, 45, and 51. Each shift should have eight or more intercessors. Each three-hour shift should have eight or more intercessors. So we've got some building up to do. In order for it to flow smoothly, you should have from 32 to 50 on your team. Do I have 32 to 50 intercessors on my team? Come on and speak to me. This allows... For those who might need to drop out for whatever reason, each intercessor would pray two three-hour-long segments in a 24-hour period. For one of our prayer watches, we had only 24 intercessors. And although it was great for group dynamics, many of the team took three watches a day. And that's three hours. Three hours per watch. They took three watches a day. And guess what happened to them? They went home physically exhausted. Remember, these intercessors stay up all night and day praying intensely. Some of them are not able to sleep well when they come off their shifts. I was so excited about what's happening in one of our prayer conferences that I foolishly stayed up for 24 hours in a row. And as a result, I became sick. A very wise woman once told me, Cindy, when you break physical laws that God has set up for his universe, your physical body breaks down. Sin ultimately does as well. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is rest. Along with segmenting the time and planting the size of the team, you will also need an idea of the various leadership responsibilities. So let me give you these quickly. Leadership. You need great leadership. Good leadership is essential. Leadership for a prayer watch generally consists of a team coordinator, a team administrator, a liaison, and prayer captain. So let's look at each individually, starting with leadership. First, a team coordinator. This is the person in charge of setting up the watch. It is his or her responsibility to choose the prayer teams, assign prayer captains to shifts, choose resource material, provide the framework for the shifts, be available for counsel if problems arise, bring emergency needs to attention, cover shifts, or assign others to cover shifts, and provide regular updates. Then you need a team administrator. This is the person who helps the coordinator with the practical aspects of setting up a prayer watch. It is his or her responsibility to send out notifications, provide resource materials, have the sign-up forms, make travel arrangements for the group, and to choose team captains prior to the watches, and arrange for provisions in the prayer room, such as water and juice, because dehydration is real. And dehydration is a real threat during long hours of prayer. As we speak, our bodies lose moisture. This is also the case when we pray for long hours at a time. If the prayer watch is a part of a conference, it is his or her responsibility to arrange a liaison between the conference leader and the prayer team. Make a prayer and praise report for conference operations and leadership. Then you need a leader. This person is the link between the conference and the prayer room. 
It may or may not be the same person as the team administrator. His or her job is to take reports from the intercessor to the leadership, take reports from the leadership of the conference concerning prayer needs and answers to prayer to the intercessors. And then you need a senior prayer leader. A prayer leader is in charge of the prayer time during any one shift. Here are some guidelines for the selection and duties. How to choose a prayer leader. You can go over that again in chapter 14. That's the number one thing. Number two, the one in charge of the prayer ministry should appoint a senior prayer leader to hold training sessions for the prayer watch leaders. Once they have been selected in order to let them know how the shifts should be run. Thirdly, the appointed prayer watch leader may assign others to assist them during their time of leading if they are not able to lead in their assigned times. However, they need to switch with another leader. Prayer leaders, number five, one, two, three, four, sorry, number four, prayer leaders need to have what I call divine elasticity and flexibility. It's divine. Elasticity and flexibility. This is especially important because sometimes people are irresponsible and do not show up for their watches. We're not going to have that. I suggest the leader call the members of his or her watch prior to their prayer shift. While your prayer sessions may be open to the public, it is still good to have your core team briefed and ready to go. You'll need a worship team. If you are doing prayer watches on a regular basis, such as with a house of prayer, you will probably have a worship team that is called to be a core team. Of course, it is good to have more than one. Now, practical guidelines. Practical guidelines and physical aspects. If the prayer watch takes place during a conference, the intercessors in the prayer room should be in the same hotel as the speakers. This makes it easier for speakers to receive prayer before their ministry time if they so desire. A cell number should be available for those who want to call in prayer requests. It is good to appoint someone to answer the phone, such as the team liaison, so that the prayer time is not interrupted. Have a whiteboard or a di digital screen ready to send out communications. Even have a map of the world, praying for all nations. If praying for unreached people groups, have resources on hand, such as Operation World. That's also in this manual. The team can also use available electronics to search the web for commentaries, historical, historical facts about an area, in order to gather information for the spiritual mapping of strongholds. Let's talk about prayer watch focuses. Prayer watch focuses. It is important that the prayer time have a focus and as I mentioned earlier, the prayer leaders must be familiar with it. So here are some suggestions. Begin each shift with a time of praise and worship. Each shift, each three hours should have a time of praise and worship. It is wonderful if you actually have a worship leader assigned to each session. You might want to include a brief time of teaching from scripture. If you do, limit the time to 15 minutes. The purpose of the meeting is to pray, not to teach. Any teaching should address the focus of the prayer watch. Introduce any team members who are new. You might pray around, you might, you, you might pray around the world on your knees. We're going to hear about that in our closing chapter. And then intersperse times of worship throughout the shifts. Let me briefly hit team building. The sense of unity among the intercessors is key to any successful prayer watch. There we go with that word unity again. The sense of unity among the intercessors is key to any successful prayer watch. Here are some suggestions to help build unity in your team. It is good to have a time of orientation in order to establish parameters for the group as a whole. Orientation should include who is and who is not allowed in the prayer room. You see how this really needs to be decent and in order. It needs to be structured and organized. Something sometimes us is don't like to do. Any schedule and special team meeting time should be made available. When praying for a conference, the entire prayer team should meet together for the first shift in order to establish prayer objectives. Allow a little time during orientation for the team members to share information about themselves and what God has said to them concerning the conference. Serve communion if possible. Hold a dinner toward the end of the watch with an affirmation session. 
Affirmation sessions are those when team members stand and describe the qualities that they have appreciated in other team members during their times of intercession together. Communal meals, if possible, are very good for team building. It is also good to have meals with the speakers and people for whom they pray as it helps them to know one another. Unity Fellowship. Other thoughts on prayer watches. If the watch is for a conference, the first day or so of the watch usually centers around the physical logistics of the meetings. It is good to send an intercessor to pray even over the registration. Are you on here, MIE? It is good to even have an intercessor to pray over the registration. All conferences seem to have birth pains in the first day or so when all kinds of problems need to be worked out. We find that we also need to pray against sickness or medical emergency for the participants. And that is true. There are times when you will need to pray for the weather. This is a good topic to pray about before the meeting take place. We have had two major battles with the elements during prayer watches. And if you do this conferences in different places, the weather is tricky in different areas. In all of the prayer watches connected with conventions that I have been a part of, the speakers have been greatly blessed by coming into the prayer room, especially those with particularly sensitive topics to cover. One underutilized but important form of prayer watch is actually done for and during a church service. At the end of these services, many are saved and even healed. One preacher told me, I can always tell when the intercessors are praying. Don't you want to hear this? Don't you want to hear this? This is a well done while you're still on the earth. I can always tell when the intercessors are praying or not. When they pray, the altars are full of people getting their hearts right with God and those being saved. When they aren't praying, the results are negligible. It isn't my preaching. It's the power of God manifested behind my preaching, which comes from the intercessors battling the spiritual darkness that comes against the people I'm preaching to. How many of our churches have intercessors praying for their pastor or the one bringing the word before they go out and preach, praying for the service, praying salvation, praying a miracle, praying suicide off people before the service begins. The church will grow again. The church will grow healthy again. Let's talk about reentry for a minute. This section might be called how to come off the mountain without falling. This concerns the time after a prayer watch experience. Here are some things that will help you as you leave the prayer watch. Realize that you are probably not the same person you were before the experience. God has molded you and stretched you and possibly given you a new ministry direction. Do not expect everyone to understand what you've been through. Most will not. Ask the Lord what you are to share with others, according to Matthew 7 and 6. Do not cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you into pieces. I am certainly not calling anyone a pig, but the principle applies. Some of the things that have happened to you are holy, and you will be able to talk about them with only a few people. Many times there's no way to explain what has even transpired. You may need time to process it yourself. Do not let your emotions spiral down on you. You have probably been in a very intimate, loving environment. You might have to go back into a difficult and not so loving situation. Beware that your emotions may rebound on you. Stay in the word and bring every thought captive to the word. Watch for emotional swings. Watch for emotional swings. Well, there was a conference once where hundreds were born again. Many miracles took place and great deliverance occurred. After his first day back at work, this man was dragging around with a sad face. When I asked him what was wrong, he said with a sigh, what a day. Nobody got saved. Nobody got delivered. Nobody got healed. Fortunately, he knew what was happening right away and was able to recover quickly from the emotional high that his body was on during a spiritually strong moment. 
of that conference. So watch after preaching and after ministering of any kind, ministering on here. Y'all continue to pray for me after these, this 30th night because I could go into an emotional low. Um, I posted a testimony today of a wonderful woman who said just the thought of today being the last day sent her into an emotional low already. So let's continue to pray. And remember, this is not the end, team intercessors. This is not the end. This is now our beginning. Now it's this, the point to see if y'all are going to put the metal to the pedal. Are we going to continue in in our training and our development for the entire rest of this year and for whatever years it takes? Be ready to start receiving ministry assignments, being coached into another level of intercession, another level of, of, of edifying God through the speaking of tongues, um, another level of being accountable to doing your resources and applications, showing up for the workshops and the conferences and the teachings right here in, in Hartford, Connecticut. This is nowhere near the ending. So the devil's lying. This is truly our beginning. And what a wonderful beginning we have had. We are right now on page 209. So watch for emotional swings. This person was upset because there was no saving, no deliverance, nobody's getting healed, but he caught it right away. Watch for Satan's backlash as intercessors to pray for you, ask intercessors to pray for you for the two week period after this, after this. So we really got to get on this prayer partner thing too. Um, we're going to talk about that within the next two weeks. We're going to have to have the prayer partners. Um, make sure my team is listening because we're going to have to make sure that after the two weeks we start assigning prayer teams and I'm going to connect some Florida people with Connecticut people and New York people with Florida people. We're going to meet people around the world and we're going to be networking in Christ, not networking in man. What's up, Christian? What are you thinking about? All right. So ask an intercessor to pray for you for the two week period after we come down from this 30 days. I'll be sending out daily teaching some of my team members. I'm going to have them do some short videos just to encourage you through some of the learning. I'm going to have them take a nugget and a takeaway, and they're going to post um, that to you. It will come in your inbox. Please make sure. Thank you, Elisa. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the website. I know it's a lot of subscription, but it's the website and YouTube that I really need you subscribed to. Facebook is because you all like Facebook. Just make sure you're on for notifications sake. But if you subscribe to YouTube and my website, you won't miss a thing. A lot of the um, short videos, a lot of uh, material, I may pop in and um, feel something from the Lord and want to share it with y'all. I may uh, send a short video asking for a roundtable meeting online. And we all check in and say, look, did you hear what's going on in the government? Did you hear what's going on in society? What is the Lord saying to you about it? Please subscribe to the website that they're posting now and also to the YouTube page, because this is not our ending, but this is our beginning. So for at least two weeks after this, we need to make sure that we're praying for one another because we have been on a spiritual high for 30 strong days. And we're not going to let the enemy turn something spiritually strong as this. Our flesh has met heaven. It doesn't know it, but it has met heaven. So coming down can be a rough place for all of us. Very good. They're putting on the screen all registered. So some people will get attacked so hard and fast that they hardly know what hit them. Use the preventative medicine of prayer. Be sure to live a life of praise during this time and dwell on the good things God has done. This brings up a key point. Many intercessors do not realize that they need prayer partners themselves and even more so when they are in deep spiritual battle in prayer. Also, I have mentioned before, the more visible or well-known the person or persons they are praying for, the stronger the personal battle will be for the intercessors. Mike Rose needs to hear that one. Do not forget your own prayer shield when you go in prayer. Welcome, Pastor Dante. Where's my book? And don't ask me about no manual. It's still in the heavenlies. Also, as I mentioned before, the more visible or well-known the person or persons that you are praying for, the stronger the personal battle will be for you as an intercessor. Amen. I'm going to skip the 24 seven. I'm going to go to this page now of the manual that talks about prayer walks. And we're on page 212, page 212. I'm, I'm really zooming. I hope y'all can keep up with me tonight. Prayer walks. 
Prayer walks are a form of corporate intercession that takes the intercessors directly to the battlefield, usually a home or a neighborhood. John Dawson speaks of battling for your neighborhood through a prayer walk in his book, Taking Our Cities for God. Taking Our Cities for God. John moved into a neighborhood in Los Angeles full of gang violence and drugs. I'm not going to read his testimony for the sake of time, but let me skip to the next page. Prayer walks are not limited to walking the land physically. See, because we orchestrate business in the courts of heaven. So I can't walk. I'm not healthy. My knees, I haven't walked in years, whatever. No excuse when you know how to move in and out of the spirit. Prayer walks are not limited to walking the land physically. You can also walk the land in prayer by declaring that certain geographic regions are put under the lordship of Jesus Christ. I love that right there. That certain geographic regions are put under the lordship of Jesus Christ. Christ. Tell me that's not powerful. You see how much power you have sitting up in your house depressed? How much power you have going in and out of the doors of the church and not taking the time? Pastor, can the doors stay over for an hour today? We want to pray for you. We want to pray for the leadership. Can we get in an hour earlier and can we begin to pray for the service and that new members would begin to come in and that the harvest would come in and that the laborers would be ready for the harvest? Do you know how many times the harvest has come into our ministry and we forgot to pray for the laborers because they weren't ready for the harvest? So it became a revolving door. This is important. Before you begin your prayer walk, it is important to dress yourself spiritually for the battle just as you would dress appropriately for any other occasion. Stop and pray before you head out the door and clothe yourself with the armor of God. Pray for protection for yourself your home, and your family, according to Psalms 91. Claim that your mind, that you have the mind of the Lord as you walk. You need spiritual exercise each day, just as your body needs physical exercise. These walks will actually do both because you stretch yourself in the spirit, but you buffet your body in the natural. Trust the Holy Spirit to guide you as you walk in. And you can start out your prayer like this. Father, I thank you that my neighborhood has been claimed for Jesus Christ. Today, I raise the banner of the Lord, his standard over my neighborhood and claim it for the kingdom of God. Like Joshua, every place that the sole of my foot treads upon is put under the authority of God's kingdom. I now place the blood of the lamb over this neighborhood, even as the children of Israel place the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorposts and lintels of their houses. Lord Jesus, please forgive the sins of my neighborhood. You say in your word that if we forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If we retain the sins of any, then they are retained according to John 20 and 23. So I ask now, for you to forgive the sins of my neighborhood. At this time, if there is any known sin, such as strife, murder, greed, love of mammon, false religions, drugs, and anything else unnamed, I ask you, God, specifically to forgive them. Lord, would you heal the people in my neighborhood of the rejection, pain, and hurts that these things produce? Forgive them, Lord, for not following you for any selfishness, racial prejudice. After remitting the sins, proclaim boldly the lordships of Jesus Christ over your neighborhood. Walk your block, people of God. Walk just one side if you want. If you know of specific areas of demonic activity, do not try to attack these alone, but ask others to go with you to pray. Make sure there is no known sin in your life when you go to pray. And ask God to show you the specific sins that are given the demons the right to establish strongholds. If a stronghold like witchcraft, you may want to fast first. The same for new age spirits. Sometimes these require soaking prayers and speaking the word of Jesus as he did in the wilderness. If there is an establishment such as a place that sells witchcraft articles, articles, Please do not forget to pray that the blindness will fall away from the eyes of those who own the shop 
and those who come into the shop do not pray, strike them dead prayers. Bind the spirit of witchcraft from operating in and through them and claim them for the kingdom of God. Remember that we are fighting against principalities and powers and not against the people who own these establishments. Do not measure results by what you see or hear. Every prayer that you pray is effective and it is like a seed planted in the ground. Continue to water it in prayer and it will surely produce fruit. Keep on claiming the promises that no weapon formed against your neighborhood will prosper. Establish borders around the houses and your house by the blood of the lamb and declare to Satan that it is off limits. Note, if you find big strongholds in your neighborhood, it is important that you have a backup prayer partner team to intercede for you or go with you to cover and your family members. This goes for any team sent out to pray over any cities. Be sure to ask God for his purpose or redemptive plan for your neighborhood. If there is a lot of wealth, speak boldly that the wealth of sinners has been laid up for the righteous and command Satan to stop blinding their eyes and, of course, to stop any hindrances from their being born again. Some neighborhoods are dying and a spirit of death seems to pervade them. Plant scriptures that will bring life, such as Psalms 1, over the neighborhood. Break the power of death and declare that the resurrection life of Jesus Christ is coming into your neighborhood. Ask God for Bible verses to pray over the houses. Stretch yourself, intercessors, to believe him for different verses for each house. Ask the Lord which blocks you are responsible for in prayer. If elderly people live there, they are likely lonely. Pray that God will give them peace and bless them with his presence and his love. And try to visit them yourself. If your land is in rebellion, forbid the rebellion from operating in your neighborhood. Bind the enemy from operating through drugs or pornography or prostitution and pray that every hidden and secret thing will be revealed. If the people are isolated, ask God to give them love for one another. Most of all, pray for the salvation of the people in each and every household. God may even call you to participate in a prayer watch or a prayer walk. Remember that he has planted you like Adam in a neighborhood and if you're and in your nation to tend to it. Water it and care for it. Under the word of God, it will prosper and bloom. Thanks be to God who's causing us to triumph on tonight. We're going to hit chapter 17 now. And we're going to end our, our evening together. But we're going to start of a new militant nation of intercessors. Come on, Dolores Bob. I spoke to you about the Anna group. You have to replay this to hear some instructions. Chapter 17, reforming nations through militant intercession. This whole entire book focuses on training for militant intercession. I'm starting on page 246. This whole book focuses on training for militant intercession. There are many excellent books that focus on other areas such as contemplative prayer, which by the way, for those that are being trained with lay counseling in your churches or in your homes, wherever uh, the Lord is leading you to do it, contemplative prayer is a powerful prayer that Christian counselors use. And they are good. God is calling a new generation of generals of intercession. However, who will change nations with an understanding that sometimes prayer is from Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Lest I scare you by using this strong Bible verse, let me tell you, I'm speaking of spiritual violence and not the kind that terrorist organizations are using. Militant intercession breaks down strongholds in heaven, which releases heaven in the earth. Let me say that again. Let me tell you that we are not talking about violence like terrorist organizations are using. Militant intercession breaks down strongholds in heaven which releases heaven to earth. It is also done on site and makes a statement on earth. 
This type of prayer sees that God's kingdom does indeed come and his will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. See Matthew 6 and 10. There are violent extremists all over the world who are killing black Americans, who are killing Christians, who are killing women, who are killing immigrants. They're killing people through beheadings and in other nations, particularly Christians and other atrocious acts. We need to learn to stand in the gap and pray against these spirits of violence and religion to break their grip on the minds of the people they have possessed. It's a possession. The people Satan has bound in darkness need to be liberated from the ideological oppression of even radical Islam, not the true Islam. That's a peaceful, loving religion. Another way to describe this militant kind of praying might be dominion intercession, dominion intercession, because it establishes God's rule into an area, taking it back from the illegal usurper, Satan. In fact, another word for kingdom is dominion, dominion. Why is this necessary? I'm going to jump over here now to page 247 after talking and moving into prayer activism. Why is this necessary? As I mentioned in the previous chapter, Satan has blinded the eyes of those who should believe. Many times in our intercession, we try to deal with the seen realm rather than the unseen realm. I heard you. Let me read that again. Many times in our intercession, we try to deal with the seen realm rather than the unseen realm. Many of us, we need to understand that in each sector of society, there are strong men. There are strong men such as humanism and corruption. In some nations, corruption is actually a principality. That's because the phone rang. Here are some sectors of society that need to be spiritually mapped and the strong man pulled down for a nation to see true change. Here are some sectors of our society that needs to be spiritually mapped and a strong man pulled down for a nation to see change. Number one, religion. Number two, family. Number three, education. Number four, government. Number five, business. Number six, arts and entertainment. And number seven, media. The same principles that pertain to the spiritual mapping of areas of sin, such as abortion, needs to be applied in each of these areas of society. In each of these areas of society. The truth is that there is a strong man over each of these areas. In fact, many times there are not just one, but several in different specialized sections. The religion mountain, for instance, remember we talked about the seven mountains? The religion mountain, for instance, could have a strong man of religion or legalism. The family mountain could have divorce. The education mountain, humanism, business, mammon, government, corruption, arts and entertainment, sexual perversion and greed, and media, mental mind control. Mental mind control. The seven mountains, religion, family, education, government, business, arts, entertainment, and media. The family mountain Let's say for one example, would we'll have divorce on it and we need an intercessor for that. The education mountain will have humanism, business, mammon, government, corruption, the arts and entertainment, sexual perversion and greed, and media, mental or mind control. Peter Wagner has an excellent chapter on spiritual mapping in his book, Praying with Power. You want to know more about spiritual mapping? We're going to do a segment on that. And um, we're going to do it on spiritual mapping as well. But Peter Wagner, she's recommending a book, Praying with Power, and it teaches you how to do spiritual mapping. Amen. All right, let's move on over to page 251. 
last paragraph, page 251, last paragraph. We must be militant in our intercession to pull down the strongholds built within our education system and societies. God is calling for intercessors to pray, especially for the schools of their nations, because as it has been said by many, the teaching of today becomes the way of government of tomorrow. I'm going to read it again. We must be militant in our intercession to bring down strongholds built within our education system and societies because God is calling for intercessors to pray. That's right, teacher Angela. God is calling for intercessors to pray, especially for the schools of their nations because, that's right, another one in the education system, because as it has been said by many, the teaching of today becomes the way the government is run tomorrow. So don't hear this stuff and think, oh, this could never happen. It's already planning to be the government of tomorrow. Let's move up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we are now going to hit... Hmm. Okay, I think I'm kind of free. I'm ready for my wrap up. So let me, I'll do this here. Yeah, this is good. I beat my time. Hallelujah. In this new move of God, let me highlight it. In this new move of God, we are learning where we have not stewarded the earth with intercession. I'm going to be on page 252. 252. Yes, Corendus. It has happened. Yes, Sandra. Absolutely. In this new move of God, we are learning where we have not stewarded the earth with intercession. In fact, we have mostly been waiting to leave the earth without a care as to its condition, either physically or spiritually. The good news is that societies can be repaired through militant reformation and intercession. Remember when I explained in chapter two, generals of intercession, how the Lord showed me that nations could be healed. His analogy to me was that a nation could be likened to an individual who has sin, broken relationships, and so forth. Sectors of society are healed in the same way. This leads to an important point. God has intercessors whom he wants to assign to each mountain of society. How about if you have a small prayer group, if you can get seven people together and you uh, subscribe, subscribe them to each a mountain, just seven people you could start with in your church or in your small group. In our church, I can tell you after this teaching, we're going to definitely have between four and five different prayer groups, different intercessory groups. This is just, I don't know if the Apostles House can seed in the spirit, but this has definitely exploded us to a whole nother dimension. And for those who are just starting, glory be to God. Don't feel no type of way. Start. This leads to an important point. God has intercessors whom he wants to assign to each mountain of society. Nope, I am now on page 253 at the top. We have fallen down in our assignment but God will give us a supernatural ability to accelerate the healing of our nations as we learn to sharpen the way we pray. The good news is that God has redemption for all nations as well as for individuals. Dutch Sheets expresses it this way. Before we fell from grace in the garden, God had already decreed how he would fix our mistakes. Both Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets writes about how God will redeem our individual past. Chuck writes in his book, Interpreting the Times, this is one of the functions of the power of salvation and deliverance, redeeming the past from the hand of the enemy, so it no longer is a weapon against us. We must look back in our histories and applying this biblical concept of redemption on a corporate level, realign our future with God's original design. In order to redeem the past of the seven mountains, we need to study each one systematically to see where the sector went off course from the principles of God or was never set on that path at all. 
I believe that one reason we have not seen the transfer of wealth, among other things, people suggest could eradicate systemic poverty. If that there are strong men over areas such as mining, banking, and economic systems. Read Proverbs 13 and 22. These strong men do not want us to fight poverty, build orphanages, find cures for medical diseases, or establish godly government. They want to keep enslaving people through prostitution and human trafficking. After this spiritual mapping of the sectors of society, there needs to be a time of seeking the Lord for a plan and time for militant intercession over each of these strongholds. Here is one way we have already prayed for a portion of the business sector and the financial structures of the United States of America. One, how were the first banks established? Two, who established the banks? Three, how was the stock market factored into the economy? And four, does the economy have any ties to others in the world? I must admit that I started researching this issue on a micro level. It was such a deep subject, I almost did not know where to begin. My first venture to the study came when I was writing the book, The Reformation Manifesto. At that time, I pondered why, since poverty came through the sin of Adam and Eve from Genesis 3, 17 through 19, have we let it grow and grow even though we have been given authority over all powers of the evil one? Why have we not eradicated systemic poverty? At the simplest level, of course, we have not seen this eradication as part of our job description as Christians because somebody else is always going to do it. Perhaps we also have not understood our role as Christians or intercessors to break the stronghold of greed, mammon, etc. that blinds men's eyes to the needs of the poor. There are some things we have targeted in prayer for the economy. After doing research on rudimentary level, we called for a world day of prayer for, ec for economies to begin healing our economic systems and bringing them under the rule of God. Going to our last page now. So what do we do now? Page 262. What do we do now? God is calling an unafraid and not intimidated body of Christ. Is that you? God is calling an unafraid and not intimidated body of Christ to pray visibly at all times, in all ways, and in every place. It is time to draw a line in the sand, intercessors. Plant our feet on that line and give our lives in militant intercession until we bring heaven to earth in our nations. May God bless you as you possess the gate of the enemy and may he use your intercessor's heart to further his kingdom. I pray that the principles in this manual will be a guide and encouragement to you as you fulfill this calling. It has been a privilege to be with you, to pray with you, to learn with you, to fast with you, to study with you, to go through whatever we went through in our personal lives and even in the news together on these 30 days. And it has been a privilege to pray what is on the heart of God. I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I seal this teaching with the blood of the lamb for any recompense of curse or sin. And I seal you with the anointing of God to break every yoke and burden that illegally tries to come in over your life to disrupt the pattern that has been set for you with this new course of life and direction. You are called into the body of Christ. You can take your tassel and turn it to the other side. You have now graduated from militant intercession. Grab your gate, start your prayer intercession, and let the gates of hell not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. You have one week 
to get all homework assignments in. Some of y'all are back on chapter six. That's fine. Some of you have already completed up to chapter 16. That's fine. Get your assignments in. You have one week. When I come back on here again, we will be sending out your certificates to you and we'll be having a special evening where we talk about it and give you a little introduction to what we will be working towards and building on with you for the remainder of this year. I really, really, really need you to subscribe so that you can stay in the loop to the website, www.suzannemhoward.com. Subscribe. I need to see my 100 intercessors. Subscribe there so that you can stay in the loop. I want you to sign up and have your own coach. And I will do teaching as well. Some teachings I will have them do with you. There is another book I'd like them to take you through. And we may divide you up in groups of 10 and have 10 coaches work with 10 of you and assign prayer partners within those groups and begin to apply the prayer partner teaching from this manual and to teach y'all how to be prayer partners for each other. You have at least the six days of what to pray for your leader, for your prayer partner, for your apostle. And you know, I haven't been your pastor, but I've been your shepherd for these 30 days. Amen. So don't forget to pray for one another for at least up to two weeks after we finish this, because we have been on a very high place spiritually and our flesh has gotten emotionally excited in that place and it's not going to have it anymore. So the flesh is going to want to bring a downer, but you're not going to go that way. So remember, um, all homework has to be in in order for you to get your certificate. And I'm going to give you one more week from today um, actually, I'll give you a week from Monday to get all your assignments in. Can we join if we get the homework done in a week? Absolutely. Uh, everyone. You can go and tell your friends. Tell them, get the book, read the book, answer the questions, get the material in. And those, I am going to greatly welcome you in to WWI, Worldwide Intercessors. And we are going to begin to establish this work to make sure that everything that you have learned, all the information that you have received will become applicable in your life. I don't want this to be another teaching that was good while you were in it, but when you were done with it, you didn't know what to do with it. So it became another book on your shelf. Get your assignments in. I'm going to come online. I'm going to have you meet the coaches that have been talking with you, prophesying to you, mentoring you during these 30 days. And um, we, we've just begun. We have, um, we now belong to a greater gathering of intercessors, of family who think like us, who has the emotional climate like us, who is called into deep depths of prayer like us, who understand the mood changes that you can go through as an intercessor, even for those who can feel how America's idol fell, one of America's icons, idols fell, and how you could feel the sadness in it and the intercessors picked it up and some was trying to think maybe something was wrong with them, not knowing that they had picked up the, the, the cry of the earth because one of the earth's icons and idols fell. So this is going to be ongoing teaching that we're going to do. I just need you to stay committed. We're going to send out a covenant, Latanya, make sure y'all note and everything I say. We're going to send out a covenant to very clear to you what these um, joining of WWI is going to be for you. And um, we're, we're not going to work at a hard pace because we do understand that not all churches are training churches. Not all churches are spiritual development centers. Some churches are just churches where you host prayer, um, um, the ordinances, um, a place to give and a place of fellowship. We understand that some churches operate as that. But we are a spiritual development center. So we are training and equipping, developing and sending out. Training, equipping, developing and sending out. That's what we do. And so those that have been elevated to work with me in this team um, has definitely walked into a place, whether they know it or not, where they have been elevated. And the responsibility is great. I love you all. Thank you very much again for your giving that everyone has given some people a dollar a day, $10 a day. Um, a, a few people sent $100 in. Someone blessed today and sent a $300 offering in. I thank you to every single one. I don't want you to be offended to give. I don't want you to be offended when asked to give. Most aren't because you know you've been on here for 30 days that I'm not just in here prophesying money, 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 money because I want you to give money. So I prophesy money. I've been teaching 
I've been correcting, I've been equipping, and maybe even a little bit of rebuking when we had our night of repentance. So this is it. I thank God for the time we've had together. I love you. I bless you with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that we continue to watch each other in prayer, praying for each other in prayer until we meet again, either this Monday, if I'm in town, if not the following Monday. However, you will continue to see updates on the blog and you will continue to get emails and some of the emails will contain short videos and it will just be giving you some reminders and some takeaways from the session to keep this oil pumping through your new intercession session. I love you all. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Send in your homework. You have a week from Monday. Cash app at Suzanne M. Howard. Um, PayPal and all that other stuff. I don't even know it all. You can find it on the website and the little app that you can keep on your phone. So when we come on the phone and not on social media, you will actually have access to those private videos that the rest of the social media platforms will not have access to. So make sure you download the app as well. All right, guys, I've got to go. I promised my family some time with them. They've been so patient with me. Um, I think my husband grew to a new level this month between the fasting and the headaches and all the te technological issues and the the breaking of so many um, <laughs> so many electronics, um, he has actually been the buffer to keep me down. So I owe them. I think we're going to go out t tonight, maybe bowl a little bit to get some of the stress off, um, to show them that mama's still here and that I love them just as I've loved you for these 30 days. God bless you all so much. And I will see you again, if not this Monday, the following Monday. But we will not let time grow between us because I need you to access what is given. I'm hoping that a few local churches, a few of our intercessors can come to your church and pray. You all can come to our church and pray. And maybe we can start this unity and help some of these pastors break down this disconnect in doctrine and religious mindsets so that the body of Christ can do what she was called to do. God bless you so much. Thank you so much again. Fellow warriors, be blessed in Jesus' name. Good night. I need the rest more than the bowling. You know it's just me still giving of myself. <laughs> Thank you. Pray for my soul to prosper. Let me go ahead and pronounce that over y'all before I turn all this equipment off. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Now it's an official blessing and good night. Yep, the next teaching is going to be good. Um, I can't remember the title right now, but it's uh, the next level for intercessors. So be ready. I love you all. Please continue to pray for each other for the next two weeks, but we'll be on again. Good night.